Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to Who Needs a Superhero? We are in Chapter 9. It is Daredevil Discernment Part 1. At first glance, Daredevil appears to lack the stuff from which superheroes are made. Where the mutant hero Havoc can fire bolts of sizzling energy plasma from his hands, Daredevil can taste the additives in his diet cola, where the Hulk can press more than 100 tons. Daredevil can identify perfume from two blocks away, where Quicksilver can run at speeds of excess of 170 miles per hour. Man, that's slow! Should have compared it to the Flash. Daredevil reads newsprint with his fingertips. Where Thor emerges intact from a nuclear blast, Daredevil responds to being shot by a handgun by bleeding freely and passing out. Huh? This is a superhero? Daredevil's truly not your ordinary superhero. He's no stronger or hardier than an ordinary athlete. His most sophisticated weapon is a cane folded into a billy club. He lives in Hell's Kitchen, and his sole superpower, heightened senses. Right. While the ability to hear a pin drop might sell telephones, it hardly seems to qualify Daredevil for leading a war on crime. Oh, and did I mention? He's blind. Hero worthy or not, Daredevil remains one of Marvel's longest running characters. Since the sightless hero debuted, debuted in 1964, he attracted some of the medium's most gifted writers and artists. From Golden Age greats like Bill Everett and Wally Wood to contemporary Wonder Boys, Kevin Smith, Brian Bendis, and David Mack, the best of da the Daredevil issues created by Frank Miller are as good as comic books get. And the old Hornhead is one of the more popular superheroes on the silver screen. I don't know about that. So, what's the appeal of the urban this urban adventurer? His origin is a variation on the hero seeking revenge theme. Young Matt Murdock wants to grow up to be just like his father, the rough and tumble prize fighting, battling Jack Murdock. But the elder Murdock had promised Matt's dying mother that he would help the boy get an education and make something of himself. At his father's insistence, Matt applies himself single-mindedly to his studies. He hits the books so diligently that he earns the enmities of local bullies who mockingly nickname him bookworm, the Bookworm Daredevil. Unbeknownst to his peers or father, Max sneaks away from the books to the gym for an exhausting workout on the bag the rings and the beams. As he grows, Matt develops himself both mentally and physically. He's well on his way to fulfilling his father's vicarious ambitions when an accident, near, accident nearly derails his plans. Matt sees a blind man crossing the street in front of a runaway truck and springs into action. Leaping forward, Matt pushes the blind man to safety, but is struck in the process. On impact, the barrels tumble from the truck bed, break open and splash Matt's face with radioactive waste. When he wakes up in the hospital, Matt Murdock is blind. The combination of the impact and the radioactive chemicals has robbed him of sight. However, his accident has heighten Matt's senses, granting him superhuman perceptions of a 
rich world of smells, tastes, sounds, and unimaginable, unimaginable to ordinary people. The exposure to the radiation has bestowed upon him a mysterious radar sense that allows him to detect objects, movement, and distance. Matt keeps his newfound abilities a secret and redoubles his efforts to grow at both school and the gym. Well, meanwhile, battling Jack Murdoch has trouble raising money for his son's college education. In desperation, the over-the-hill fighter hooks up with a crooked promoter called The Fixer, but Jack Murdoch defies The Fixer's orders to throw a fight one evening when Matt is in the audience. Eager to make his son proud, the aging boxer defeats a much younger opponent. The fixer retaliates by having the elder Murdoch gunned down in the street. In spite of his grief, Matt finishes his education and graduates as valedictorian of his class. He opens a law office with school chum Foggy Nelson to fight for justice in the legal system. But Matt's victories are rendered hollow by his father's unavenged murder. He begins to craft a plan. He dons a costume. He dubs himself Daredevil, transforming the childhood taunt into a title of pride and vows to use his super senses to track down his father's killers. He soon sends the gunmen to jail, sees the fixer die to dropping from a heart attack in an effort to flee our avenging hero because young Mac Murdoch promised his father He'd make a way in the world using his mind, not his fist. The second identity of Daredevil offers the young man a way to keep his promise and still indulge his adventurous yearnings. Matt Murdock, the attorney, will fulfill his father's dreams for a respectful, peaceful life. On the other hand, Daredevil will be a separate persona, carrying on the good fight in the spirit of heroic Jack Murdock. And that is the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two.